Aha! Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today's topic is going to be about specific gravity. So what does specific gravity mean? It's basically the ratio of a density of a substance over density of water. And there are a few things that I want you to be aware of. So before that, let me refer to specific gravity as SG just to make it simple. So number one things that I want you to keep in mind is that a specific gravity of water is one. Number two, specific gravity has no unit. It's basically unitless. This is the reason why number one has no unit associated with it. So now let's look into what is the formula for specific gravity. So the formula for specific gravity, it is basically weight of a substance in gram over weight of equal volume of water in gram. So, we understand basically what the first part means. Weight of a substance in gram. So let's say I have a substance. Let's say I have, let's take an example. I have a substance A. And this substance has weight of 15 gram and volume of 20 milliliter. So when it comes into this equation, the 15 gram that is over here, it's basically the weight of the substance. So 15 gram will come here. And the bottom part, what this part means over here is the weight of equal volume of water. So volume of water that is equal to the volume of a substance. So here the substance has a volume of 20 milliliter. Therefore, the volume that is equal to water would be 20 milliliter as well. So this will be equal to 20 milliliter of water. However, here we're looking for gram. So how can I convert 20 milliliter of water to grams? And this is the third thing that I want you to keep in mind always, is that one milliliter of water equal one gram of water. Therefore, knowing that we have a 20 milliliter over here of water, this means this is equal to 20 grams of water. And this is the reason why specific gravity is unitless. The reason why it's because grams with grams cancel each other out. So that's what the top parts mean and the bottom part mean. The third thing and the, the fourth and fifth things that I want you to keep in mind are these. So number four, 
specific gravity of a substance or an object that is less than one, less than one, it's basically meaning that this object or substance is lighter than water. Because the specific gravity of water is one. And if I have a, an object or a substance that has a specific gravity less than one, it means it's lighter than water. And number five, if an object or a substance has a specific gravity that is larger than one, means that it's heavier than water. So let's take some examples to understand what number four and five means. So let's say I have three objects. Let's say I have object number one. It's basically this square. Object number two, it's another square. And object number three, it's also another square. What makes these three objects different from each other, each one of them has a specific gravity. So number one has a specific gravity of 0 0.3. And let's say number two has a specific gravity of 0 0.9. And the third object has a specific gravity of 1.1. Now, let's say that we have a bucket of water. We have bucket number one. So this is number one. Bucket number two. And bucket number three. And all these buckets, they're basically filled with water. So this is the surface of the water. So what happened, so this is two, this is three. Let's say I want to put this object inside this bucket of water. So what's going to happen? So we said if we have a specific gravity that is less than one, which is less than the specific gravity of water, it's going to be lighter than water. So we have 0.3 specific gravity, which means 30% of this object, it's going to be submerged in water. So if I were to place this object in this bucket, means that only 30% will be submerged in water and 70% will stay on top of the surface of the water. The reason why, it's because it's lighter than water. For object number two, we have a specific gravity of 0 0.9, which means 90% will be submerged in water. So if I take this and put it in this bucket, that's mean only 10% it's gonna be on the top, and 90% will be submerged. Okay, now let's take a look on object number three. Here I have a specific gravity of 1.1, which means that 110% will be submerged in water. Of course, there is no such thing as 110%. What we have over here is we have an object that has a specific gravity that is higher than one. Therefore, it's heavier than water. So what's going to happen if I take this object and place it in this bucket number three, it's going to basically submerge all the way to the bottom of this bucket. So 100% will be in this bucket. Of course, it cannot go 110 because it cannot pass through the bucket and go 110%. It's going to be 100% inside this bucket. And this is exactly what I mean by an object or a substance that is lighter than water or heavier than water. Now, after understanding the basic of specific gravity, where does specific gravity comes into play when it comes into pharmacy field? So specific gravity is basically used when it comes into compounding medication for a specific patient. Or it could be also used for urinalysis. So let's take an example. 
So in your analysis, it has a specific gravity of 1.005. It's actually a range of specific gravity to 1.030. So your analysis is basically for, uh, when a patient goes into a clinic, let's say, and they want to test the urine to see if everything is okay with the patient or if there is any um, things in the urine to, to see if there is anything that is abnormal. So what happened, let's say a patient goes to a clinic and if you have seen this cup of urine, they give you the cup of urine, you go to the bathroom and you give them a sample of your urine in that cup. So they take that cup that is full of urine and they look to see what's the specific gravity in that urine. So let's assume that for this specific patient, let's say we have patient named PT. That's the name of the patient. And this patient has a specific gravity that is higher than 1.030. So we just learned that any specific gravity that is higher than the range, so here we said for water, if it's higher than, higher than one, it's going to be heavier. So here, if it's higher than 1.030, it means it's higher than the normal specific gravity for urine. Therefore, this means that there could be some things in the urine, for example, it could be a glucose, and this could potentially refer to that this patient may potentially have diabetes. And that's how specific gravity is used in urine. So now, let's look into some examples into how it's used in compounding. So I do have two examples over here. And we're going to be applying this formula. This formula over here when it comes into these two examples. So let's look into example number one. So example number one says, if 160 milliliter of sorbitol solution weights 180 gram. So I have a sorbitol solution that has 160 ml and the weight of that solution is 180 gram. What is its specific gravity? So basically, we're looking for a specific gravity. So let's apply this formula. So we know that specific gravity equal weight of a substance in gram. So let's look for the weight of this sorbitol solution. So the weight is 180 grams. So it's 180 grams. And on the bottom it says weight of equal volume of water in grams. So we have the weight of this substance or this solution. It's 160 milliliter. Which means it's equal to, so this is equal to 160 gram of water. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna divide 180 grams of this solution over 160 grams weight of water that is equal in volume to this solution. So what's gonna happen now, basically just dividing 180 over 160 and grams cancel each other out. So if you calculate this 180 over 160, you should end up with, let's change it to red, it's going to be 1.125. So this is the specific gravity for sorbitol solution. Now, let's look into example number two. The example says, what is the weight? So look, we're not looking for a specific gravity, we're looking for the weight in this case. In gram of 100 
1,600 milliliter of glycerin. So we do have the volume and also the question gave us a specific gravity of glycerin which is 1.25. So let's go back to the specific gravity equation. So specific gravity equal weight of the substance, here we have glycerin, the weight is basically what we're looking for, so we're going to mention this as X, because that's what we're looking for, and has a volume of 1600. So we just learned the volume of that substance, it's basically the same volume of water, and we know that one gram of water equal one milliliter of water, therefore we have here 1600 grams. Now, we are given a specific gravity for glycerin. So this specific gravity, it's known, and it is 1.25. So all I need to do is multiply in, basically from here, what I need to do is multiply this, this with this, to get x. So basically just solve for x. So x, which is the weight of this glycerin, equal 1.25 times, this one has no unit because it's specific gravity, 1600 grams. So 1.25 times 1600, it's going to be 2000 grams. And that's the final answer for this question. And yes, there is a unit because we're looking for the weight in this case. We're not looking for the specific gravity. When there is a specific gravity, there is no unit. Because remember, we said specific gravity has no unit. So this is the end of this video. If you have any question, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.